Good morning. Good morning to you, sir. I hope you are doing well. I'm making it through the day, yes. <laughs> That's all we can do. One step at a time. I got my morning cup of coffee here, and I want to welcome Roger officially and welcome anyone and everyone, all of our fans out there that are watching this. We are starting a whole new series today, and we want to thank everybody that's been with us. As it turns out, Roger, we are right in, I, I don't remember exactly the right date, but I know we're right at the four-year mark, so congratulations, Roger. We've made it this far, baby. That's amazing to me that we've done this for four years. It seems like we just got started. But then I look at the list of videos you've posted, and I go, wow, we have been doing this for a while, haven't we? Yeah, I was cleaning up some of the playlists yesterday just to make everything just so, and I realized, wow, you know, the, our, our main playlist, the chronological playlist, with even with all the breakdowns of the advanced scenario multiple sessions, we, we got over 125. So there's plenty of viewing for you out there, folks. And we hope those of you who are new to the system are getting something out of it. And for those of you who just enjoy being a fly on the wall, we hope you're getting something out of this too. Based on the feedback that we get week in and week out, that is what is happening. So, I mean, I am just overjoyed that we are providing some content out there that somebody finds either useful or entertaining. And I could not do it without my partner in crime here, Roger. So this gives us the opportunity to reintroduce ourselves at the beginning of every new series so, not to put you on the spot, could you tell everybody just a little bit about yourself? Uh, sure. Born and raised on a small farm in Iowa. I, I got involved in gaming, if you consider, I think chess is considered a war game. My dad taught me to play chess. I can't remember not knowing how to play, so he must have taught me at a very young age. We had other board games around the house, Monopoly, Clue, things like that. About 10 years old... I uh, saw a copy of Africa Corps, the Avalon Hill classic game in a local five and dime store and told my mother I wanted that for Christmas. I was probably about 10 years old. I, I was into history even as a young, young person. And my mother remembered and bought it for me for Christmas. And I played my uh, youngest, oldest brother. He's six years older than me that game and then a couple years later i don't remember exactly why or how it was birthday or christmas i got a copy of richtofen's war which i played that primarily solo because at that point my brother had gone on to college and uh didn't really do any gaming in college i i just i remember one person tried to get me in dungeon and dragons on our bone floor and i just didn't really get into it and uh but then as a bachelor i bought the victory games the civil war uh in a local game store Set that up as a bachelor, played that. Got married, and my wife and I would go to the beach for a couple of weeks, and I'd take that. And one year I forgot to take the Civil War, and so I drove into it's Charleston, drove into a game store there, and bought Roads to Gettysburg, the original Roads to Gettysburg. And that was my introduction to the great campaign system. And I, I played that on our beach trips, and my wife bought me Stonewall Jackson's Way, the original. And I would alternate, take one or the other. And we got away from that for many years, and I stumbled on your video. I was watching probably a YouTube documentary on the Civil War, and your tutorial popped up in the recommended list. And I thought, well, I've got that game, those games. So I watched your tutorial and set it up Stonewall Jackson's way and pushed some counters and got more involved and uh, ended up joining a Facebook group. And Ken Lee posted they were going to do a multiplayer game on vassal which i didn't know what that was and <laughs> i was probably 45 minutes to an hour late getting into that session because i couldn't you know i had to get our download and installed and didn't understand what was going on and i posted on facebook uh, for somebody to help teach me how to use vassal and how to play gcaw online and you responded and uh I guess I'll just stay from there. The rest is history. And I, my wife blames you for now a, a gaming bookcase that I now have, <laughs> almost full, that when we started I had four games. So 
There you go. <laughs> to that I say, sorry, not sorry. <laughs> I, but something struck me about that story that it reminded me, the part where you said you went into Charleston and you picked up roads to Gettysburg. Technically, I think that makes you a longer player in the Great Campaign series than me, because what what would have that have been? Early 2000s, perhaps? Mid-90s? Oh, had to have been in the mid-90s. Yeah. So... Uh, probably about 95, 96, something like that, because we'd been married... We got married in 93. So, yeah, it was probably 96, 97, somewhere in there. So, Roads to Gettysburg came out in 94. That means, technically, you have been playing the series, uh, the system, much longer than I have, because I didn't come into it until uh, about mm, 2006, seven, something like that. And that was a conscious decision. But let me quick pivot over to introduce myself. My name is Patrick, and this is uh, Patrick's Tactics and Tutorials. It is a mouthful, I know. This all got started just out of necessity. I was bored, and, and Ken Lee did play a hand in that. I had, uh, 10 years ago, about 2013, just on a lark, I had borrowed some screen capture software from a buddy of mine, and I was just experimenting with that. And I realized that I really like the Great Campaign system, I just had a hard time learning it, and the, the way that I did learn it was to kind of go through the rule books, and at that time, Jay Myers had a very good website called Wargame Replays, which is now sadly defunct, but there are ways to get to that. If you go to the Wayback Machine or the Internet Archive, you can actually get the, some of those old, old links and the sublinks to work to that. So th that material is still out there. There are there are copies of it on the interwebs, but you just have to work a little harder to get it. But I used that site to kind of help me get up to speed on it, and there were no videos at that time. I mean, uh, YouTube was only about four or five years old at that point. So I said, well, maybe this will be a help of some to some other people. And I created a series of five videos, and they are so adorably rough uh, now, and I keep promising people as they ask me about them that I am, that one of my projects this year is to go back and to do a Redux version of them to improve a lot of the technology and just the scripting and the examples and all that stuff. So that is in progress. Trust me, I am working on it. I just want to make sure it's perfect, you know, just so. Uh, so I made those, and those sat dormant out there. I mean, people were using them, but I didn't do really much with the system until COVID came along. I was playing in tournaments. I was learning the system. I was kind of honing my craft. But I've always considered myself sort of a, a middling, competent player. I can play the system. I'm just not as good as some of the sharks that are out there that uh, compete at World Board Gaming Championship or at w Winter Offensive every year. But I, I guess I can keep my own with them. So when Ken started doing those, hey, let's get together online and kill some time during COVID in the first, literally the first few weeks of COVID, I said, well, I'll be happy to record those and I'll put them on YouTube and then everybody can benefit from them. And it was immediately right after that, that that's when you approached me and said, uh, I, I will be your Padawan to Vassal. And I said, of course, I would love to help somebody learn the system and pay it forward. And I just did not even comprehend that we would be here four years later. I figured, you know, People are watching marble racing, so they'll watch anything when they're stuck in the house during COVID. <laughs> but as soon as COVID was done, I figured, well, people are going to just move on with their lives. And, and that is not so, because we've seen so many YouTube channels, just like Mushrooms in the Night, just pop up and provide all forms of variable content. Some good, some eh. But uh, I, the fact that we still get positive feedback and encouragement to keep going... Now I'm a completist. We've started down a path, and I just feel like, well, we got to do it now. And uh, it has been an absolute joy to share my Sunday mornings and coffee with you, sir. So we've gone through a bit, and we've also used it as an opportunity to highlight some of the new stuff that are coming out from Multiman Publishing, and they've been very supportive of letting us to get some early peeks at things, and that kind of, I think it's a very symbiotic relationship. It helps them with that stuff. So... We are now at the point where we're kind of coming back on track, and we are going to do something that's a little different. And we are going to tackle the critically acclaimed and yet vastly underplayed Burnside Takes Command title. And for those of you who are not familiar with Burnside Takes Command, I understand. I, this will be a first time for me as well. It was published in Skirmisher Number 2 back in 2003. 
So it is not easily available, but if you, if you have friends, you could probably wink, wink, get an eye on it. But there were some specialty counters that were released with it. So through the wonderful work of our benefactor, Alberto Romero, who incidentally was a play tester on this way back in 2003, because I went to the credits in Skirmisher, and there is Alberto's name. He has just recently created this very fine module for us to use, and what we've been doing with great campaigns up to this point has been quasi-chronological. Before we jumped over to the newest release of On to Richmond 2, so for those of you watching these along the chronological playlist, this will, will not matter at all to you, but after we finished all that, we realized, well, let's get back to where we left off, which was immediately following the events of the Maryland campaign. So late September, we have the Confederate forces driven back across the Potomac, and now we're going to come into the lead-up to the Fredericksburg campaign, which has always fascinated me. We always kid about Ambrose Bird's side, but now there's this entire fan-made module that will highlight three basic scenarios and a small campaign for the events between mid-November and late December 1862. So I think this is going to be fascinating. What is your historical take on this, Roger? I mean, I, you're you're a vastly well-read person on the this. Do you have any recommendations on book titles that might play in with this? Surprisingly, or maybe not so surprisingly, most of the references I'm going to suggest are more general. Bruce Canton's Army of the Potomac Trilogy, great place to include uh, Shelby Foote's obviously huge volumes the book i own is fredericksburg fredericksburg by i'm looking at it here by author's name is rabble r-a-b-l-e which actually the title comes from the chant of the union army at gettysburg as the confederate soldiers were driven off on the third day the union army started chanting fredericksburg fredericksburg in response to the fact that what had happened to them at fredericksburg Looks like Gary Gallagher has a book called The Fredericksburg Campaign, which I've never read, but I imagine he always writes really good stuff. I, I love Gary Gallagher. Uh, I can't recommend him enough, so I'm I'm definitely going to look at that one now for this. So th those would be excellent references. But yeah, it's an interesting campaign because I think it was Bruce Canton who pointed out you know, the Battle of Fredericksburg. Burnside's huge problem is the Army, well, he had many huge problems, but was his inability to write a coherent order. <laughs> as opposed to Grant, who that was his great strength. And he basically writes the same orders to all three of his, and we'll talk about grand divisions here in a second. And Sumner took it literally. You know, he takes every single, because that, that's who he was. He was a... He was old, old army, yeah. Old army. You know, he, he learned everything there was to know about commanding, I think, I think this was Ken. He, he learned every, knew everything about how to command a company of dragoons. Past that, he didn't know anything at all. So he takes his entire grand division where Franklin who actually had an opportunity, he could have won the battle of Fredericksburg if, if he just have reversed those two commanders, because Franklin only attacks with Meade's division. Tremendous success, but he doesn't support it, so Meade has to fall back, and uh, Burnside could have been the hero of the Union. It's just an odd thing that he wasn't, and of course, he, I'm in Knoxville, Tennessee, so he also is the hero of Knoxville. He saves Knoxville later on in the war, so... It's an interesting campaign. I think I, I have soloed this. I, I accidentally got the counters. I bought, because you mentioned being a completist. Once I started playing it, I was like, oh, I've got to get this. i got to get that. So I bought the original version of Grant Takes Command. And in the box was the counters for Burnside Takes Command. And I contacted the person who uh, sold me the game. He goes, oh, that's where those went. I'll just sell you the skirmisher as well. So I got a copy of the skirmisher that way as well. So... Well, that's handy. Yeah. That's some, so some... I, I have soloed these. I, 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 I think it was just it's fascinating what they've they've done to incorporate the grand divisions into this. I think you're going to enjoy playing it. I really liked the campaign game when I played it. It rained a lot, as it always does on me. It always rains. <laughs> of course. <laughs> uh, but I think I think I hope people enjoy this. I I know a lot of people were, were asking us to maybe look at. Petersburg campaign or, or, or the new Vicksburg game that's coming out. But I think this blast from the past, I think people will enjoy seeing because it's not out there. I don't think I, I have seen a couple new after action reports show up on board game geek. 
because of the new vassal module that Alberta's put together, but I think we're really going to have fun doing this. I know I'm going to have fun doing it. Yeah, me too. Just a shout out to, I, I mentioned this is a fan-made module or campaign that was in Skirmisher. The game design was originally Carl Laskus. And yes. I, I don't know Carl personally, but there are many others in the, obviously I know Ed, uh, he was the game developer on this, so he he assisted Carl in that, you know, just kind of honing it, cleaning up some of the rough edges, I'm sure, and getting it to this where it was ready for release. But I'm looking through the playtesters, and, you know, many of them are uh, people I know, like Bob Jamelli. Bob is on my combat commander ladder. So even here we are, 21 years removed, we still see folks that are still very active in this community. Alberto Romero, Scott Spurgeon I've played against many times, and Stephen Sandy's on there too. I think he's part of the Friday night fights group on vassal so it is wonderful that something like this can still bring people together and yet it's so again it's it's really fairly unknown because either there's lack of interest in burnside and all they know is oh fredericksburg that was the doomed union advance across the rappahannock or whatever but i'm very excited to try this simply for when when you and i decided to do this was just going through and just reading that little bit on the small changes that they made to what is ostensibly a, a, a cobbled together, you know, uses maps from this and that, it uses counters from this, and then it added just a few extra counters to really bring out this fascinating part of what Burnside brought to the table. Folks ask why, Roger mentioned that, you know, we, we had gotten a lot of feedback after the end of the last series of, oh, you should go do this or go do that. Could you go through and do that one more time with the grand campaign? I'm like, oh, geez, <laughs> that was that was a long, that was 24 different episodes we did. So, uh, but the reason we did this one, obviously, I mentioned coming back to the chronology that kind of gets us back into late 1862 so we can proceed back on sort of a, a linear path through the war we were doing. It was unintentional. But once we started doing that, we realized, well, we can just pick the next title that makes sense, and that kind of keeps us in the 1862 to 1863 range. So once we go on to Stonewall's Last Battle, which will probably be the next thing, that's May of 1863, and then we will probably get to, you know, barring any other things, that we, we may do the Vicksburg stuff. Don't know. It, we'll, we'll just have to see how that comes but I think this will give us about eight to ten weeks on this series because there's only three basic scenarios. So we'll play yeah. each of those twice. So that's six weeks or six weekends. I can't imagine they're going to take more than a session. And then we'll do the advanced campaign, which is, uh, would you say? Uh, it's only 30, 31 turns, I think. And what I experienced when I played it uh, was a lot of rain, a lot of fog. Again, here's a new thing they've added is fog and the fog rules, which I thought were really interesting. There's a lot of twists they made to this. And I'll just say, uh, you know, the one of the reasons why we went with chronological, at least from my perspective, is you'd ask me what I wanted to do and I'd start reading a scenario book. I go, well, this looks good. I'll just, then I'd read the next one. Well, this looks good. Same, <laughs> right? Yeah, same. <laughs> this looks good too. Yeah. Uh, so I couldn't really. So by saying chronologically, it just made it a lot easier to make the decision what we're going to do next. The other advantage for us on this, speaking to that, is we, we just finished the Overland campaign. So again, if you're watching these in, from the playlist, you you won't realize that. But for us, you know, we just spent six months with Grant in the Overland campaign. But the terrain familiarity for us right now is we've played over these battlefields in this terrain a bunch oh. of times now between Stonewall Jackson's Way 2 and Grant Takes Command 2. But we're pretty familiar with the Orange and Alexandria Railroad and Culpeper and everything west of the wilderness. We have a pretty good beat on. So we both strategically, tactically, maybe know how to use some of this terrain for these particular new puzzles and that's why i like this area you know i have personally my friend peter uh, who does the commands and colors stuff with me he lives in western virginia and we went to manassas one day and he took me and basically we drove on the warrenton turnpike all the way to manassas so i am like oh my gosh i know that sign i know that place <laughs> and in my mind my great campaigns maps were just coming through so thank you charlie kibler for all my geographic knowledge of the area yeah i've never been there uh it's on my to-do list to convince my wife to take a, a vacation in that area. I'll see if I can pull that off here in the next year or two. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I think you're uh, you're better set for it than I am. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let's, uh, let's see. We've talked about the history a little bit. Let's talk about the overall setting of the game here. Uh, I, I'm going to defer to Roger a lot on this just because you've had experience with it. But the uh, 
the big point of this with Burnside Takes Command is the first scenario that we're playing through today is called the Lincoln Stanton Plan. Everyone that mentions this to me, they all point out this is apocryphal, this is a, a what if scenario, although it doesn't specifically say that, but it is the Lincoln Stanton Plan. So we know that, you know, this is what Lincoln and Stanton wanted to do when they put Ambrose Burnside in charge. So this is if they had affected that and said, do it this way. So that's what we're going to be playing through here in this first one. The big difference on this, in this uh, set setting, was Burnside came in and he felt overwhelmed by the number of corps, right? And historically he said, let me see if I can reorganize. So McClellan had, had organized everyone into these fine corps, and then he said, that's too many corps! So he wanted to unify and consolidate some of the command and control logistics, or the at least the line of command, up to him. So he created the the wings of left, center, and right. And in this module, we see that we've got some of the counters, uh, like Hooker is now the grand division leader of the center, right, with a three tactical. And in the left side, we've got Franklin, as Roger mentioned, and Sumner is on the right. And we can see that there's a color coding around their numbers. So the left is in red, the right is in blue, and the center is in green. And that means there are two core that that report to each of those wing commanders. So you can see from a logistics standpoint, they're, all, they're already mixed and matched. So what this introduces is a, a wonderful new layer of complexity that they even say right here. Grand assaults are even harder now. It is counterintuitive because he was trying to make it better, but all he did was add a layer of bureaucracy between himself and all of the core commanders. So now, if you, as the Union player, want to initiate an assault, great, you initiate an assault. If you want to initiate a grand assault, well, it's got to go up the chain a bit. <laughs> so it's got to go to the grand division leader. And then if it gets approved by them, it's got to go all the way up to Burnside. And there are two critical failure points now introduced there. And I love that because it's like, ah, oh, as if it wasn't hard enough to do a grand assault. Now it's double failure time, right? So um, what are your thoughts on that? I liked it when I played it. The complex, I mean, for this scenario, obviously you're going to have to make a decision. How much do you want to take advantage of the mechanics? Because I imagine a lot of people don't have the rules in front of them. So for three days, 15th, 16th, and the 17th, the three days of this scenario, is you'll get a plus two to your movement roll if you activate using your Grand Division Leader. But you've got to have both your core commanders within command radius to take advantage of that. And you can't, it's like strategic movement in Grant Takes Command. You can't enter a Zoc. You can exit a Zoc. So there's definitely a, a positive to it. As it says, there's pluses and minuses. That's the huge plus. And you can, if you get your Grand Division within the three hex limit of your core commanders, then you have another three hexes for them. So you could spread out over almost, you know, a tw 12 hex area. You can, you can work within if you can get your guys organized. Uh, I don't know in this scenario, this first one we're going to play, if you'll want to take the time to do that. But it is a huge advantage for movement if you can pull it off. But again, you might also roll one, so you know, that's not very helpful. I, I like that it does now blend. It gives you sort of the aspects of Activate Army Leader, but with the, yes. the risk of, and independence of perhaps a district leader. Um, so we're kind of seeing the union's answer to that. But yeah, uh, I mean, I'm looking at the, the paragraph there that says, you know, only one Grand Division leader at a time may be chosen, and that Grand Division leader is eligible for activation only if both <laughs> of the core yeah. leaders from that... So that immediately means that it's totally useless because you got Smith way over there, and you can't activate, yeah. you can't activate him for that extra plus two. So that's terrible, right? <laughs> Yeah, like I said, I, I don't know in this scenario if you're going to want to take the time to try to get... And I think this is historically accurate for the start of the campaign. It's interesting how Burnside chose to organize them, given that they weren't actually camped next to each other. Again, it's one of those questions, you know, probably no one knows an answer to except for him at the time, why he organized them the way he did. Yeah. So why, why wouldn't he take the ninth core and add him to Hooker? Because the ninth core is sitting right there. Right. But no. <laughs> but no, he chooses to combine Hooker with uh, Franklin. Of course, his whole 
And, and as you said, this is the Lincoln Staunton plan. This is what Lincoln wanted when they put Burnside in command. They go and visit him with Halleck, and this was the beginning of Lincoln's frustration with Halleck is his refusal to give Burnside a direct order as to what to do. <laughs> he lets Burnside make up his mind, and he's going to head towards, which will play out here as Fredericksburg, as Burnside wanted to get around the flank. And of course, we know what, historically what happens, but I really enjoyed this. The other aspect of this that's added, they make some modifications to the pontoon bridges. Obviously, that's going to be a factor downstream when we get towards Fredericksburg proper and the Rappahannock and everything like that. So we'll address those as they come up. Uh, probably not going to happen too much in this first scenario. But then we have uh, Henry Hunt, artillery leader, who yes. is stacked here with Burnside. And he gives a plus one if he's stacked with a unit that has at least a one on their artillery. He's going to give an improvement to that that role, whether they're on attack or defense, if he's stacked with them, then because of his skill with the artillery, he's going to give a plus one to combat roles. That's neat too. That's going to kind of, you know, if you can figure out where to best apply him, like in you and I, in our Grant Takes Command stuff, we hardly ever used Upton because I think partly was we just weren't building as many fortifications and in response that other unit was like well I need the fluidity to move so Upton was not even a factor but I think Hunt in this case if you have him in the right place at the right time could that plus one die roll modifier can make a huge difference of course yes yes that and I like that it was both attack and defense so now you have to kind of decide you know or where you want him. And uh, on the Confederate side, for people who don't have the rules, there's Lee does have the Lee bonus, uh, and, but there's no Jackson or Longstreet bonus. So on the Confederate side, Lee is the only leader bonus modifier we have for this uh, module, which okay. is kind of disappointing. I was hoping I was looking <laughs> to see if I, could, if I could get a Jackson modifier, but there wasn't one. Not that Jackson's not even in this scenario to start with, but Let's talk about scenario number one. Uh, this is, of course, the lincoln Sutton plan. And the Lincoln administration strongly favored the strategy of attacking Longstreet's Corps, which is down here at Culpeper, while it was separated from Jackson's wing. The Army of the Potomac would drive on Culpeper and proceed along the Orange and Alexandria Railroad towards the junction at Gordonsville. Fine, fine barbecue in Gordonsville. A successful Union offensive would drive a wedge between the two Confederate wings and compel Lee to battle on unfavorable favorable terms. Jackson's Corps was about three days away at Front Royal and Winchester. Burnside could operate freely on Longstreet during that time, but he would have to keep his rail supply line protected against Jackson as he advanced. And that is going to be, as we see here, a modifier to the final point schedule for this scenario, which is three turns, an alternate history or an apocryphal scenario. It's a what if. This is November 15th to November 17th, so we're going to do this. Hopefully we'll be able to get through this in one day, I think, because it's a small counter density. There are no random events, no major river bridges on this one. The only restrictions on this one is we have caps on, uh, we have turn two caps on a, some of the units there for the Union, so that's not a problem. And uh, Ransom, we got poor Ransom down here for the Confederates. He cannot move on turn one, wherever he is. Uh, that's also got a cap on him. And Roger can use substitute units in this one, so which is unusual for a basic scenario, but he can drop off subs, which I'm sure now that we're all skilled at doing that, we're going to find those strategic locations. We're going to be dropping off little subs here and there. The victory conditions are listed. You can see that all of these railroad stations here, which the Orange and Alexandria was the primary goal of, of the Union advance here, we can see that Alberto's put the uh, numeric value on them in victory points. This is the Union trying to collect victory points on this one. And as they take these at the very end of the scenario, so right now they're uncontrolled. At the end, if the Union controls them, they will get those victory points. But one wonderful thing about this is if they can get down to beyond the Rappahannock and they can get to Brandy Station, uh, you can see the little asterisk on those, and Culpeper, and even farther down, Mitchell Station or Rapidan Station, because of those asterisks, if the Union controls those and they have a line of supply along the railroad, and that line of supply can be in a Confederate Zock, but it must not have a Confederate unit on the railroad. If that is the case, if they have a complete line all the way back up 
to uh, the northeast there, then they will get double points for those ones listed as asterisks. So that's handy. And a, uh, a union marginal on this one is 14 victory points. So all they got to do, all they got to do is collect uh, a few of these, try to get some of the doubles, inflict some manpower losses, which are because it's 1862, it's plus one, minus one. So we're back to what we consider the usual amount for that. And that is it. It's, it's manpower losses and victory point locations at the end of three days. So there's going to be a lot of movement, a lot of maneuver, a lot of mobility. Uh, opening thoughts on this one. Yeah, I, you can't drop off subs. So you kind of have a problem in that you collect your little two pointers there. You're going to have to drop off a whole division to control those two pointers. So that's going to cut into your manpower because that's the huge advantage you've got. And for me, it's going to be a question of can I hold the line, block your supply. If people are wondering why Hood is so far away, it's because his division has smallpox. That's why he's sitting down there all by himself. And, uh, disorganized. and Flip disorganized, yeah. Well. Yeah. That's the historical reason for that. Um, oh, and then Ransom is way over at Madison Courthouse. Okay. Yeah, Ransom's long way away, and he's gonna when he comes in, he's going to be at fatigue, fatigue one. So... Uh, it's really the guys at Culpepper are going to have to do the lion's share of the work here, along with Stuart. Yeah, we are really, I mean, it, it is a very small counter density on this one. There's not a lot and a finite number of fatigues that you can do. But again, since you can split things off, that gives you a little more opportunity for getting some extra fatigues out of smaller units. Um, all right, well, I'm coming into this absolutely cold. Uh, I volunteered to take because it's my turn, <laughs> my turn in the barrel to take the Union once again. So uh, I have no idea. I'm going to be pulling levers to see what happens here. I'm going to try to utilize these individual wings to their best advantage. But clearly I'm not going to get the plus two movement on some of them because obviously uh, Smith can't even move until turn two. So uh, the center is not going to be moving as fast as perhaps some of the other ones. But... Uh, we've jibber-jabbered here for 35 minutes. We got all of that administrative stuff out of the way. I think we're ready to start. Of course, when we do the replay on this one, it's going to be much faster to get underway. So we apologize and appreciate your patience as we get underway here. Uh, so, Roger, uh, let me wish you good luck, sir. Good luck to you as well. Why don't you take the first initiative roll? Okay, here we go. Hey! Possible I thought <laughs> Yes! Possible in the turn. <laughs> no. Oh, Sorry. man. For those of you who haven't watched Grant Takes Commands, just watch. If, if you don't want to watch everything, just watch the last session of that. And you'll understand why I'm so excited to see Oh, man. Words. Schadenfreude <laughs> is a real thing, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Well, that is, uh, that is Confederate, so off you That's go. right. I win ties, yeah. Well, where do I want to start here? Interesting. I guess we'll start with Longstreet. Claus, Anderson, and Pickett. So they all go to T1. It's supposed to be one dice plus two. It's four. Uh, Longstreet will stay with McClaws. Pendleton first. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Anderson go. One. Two, three, four, there. And I am going to drop off a sub. I'm going to give him five manpower and one piece of artillery. Ticket is going to go one, two, three, four, to there. Okay. Initiative. It's mine again. So we'll take all three of these guys again, including the artillery. There's their movement. Six this time. We can go one, two, three, four to there. Anderson will go one, two, three, four to there. Artillery will go one to there. 
Well, Claus will go one to there and he'll drop off another sub. And once again, it'll be five manpower. One piece of artillery. That's one, two, three, and four to there. Uh, initiative. Mine again. Well, can't complain about getting the initiative rolls. Next, Stuart, Hampton, and F. Lee. Okay. Yeah. It's going to be eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to there. Initiative, yours. It's almost as if you've played this before. Hmm. All right. Well, let's see what, what kind of wreck we can get rambling here. Uh, let's see. All right. Let's uh, let's get Butterfield moving here. He's he's reporting to Hooker, so I'm going to activate all of them to fatigue level one, and we're going to give them a die roll. March plus one. There we go. All right. So they're going to all just go one hex and one hex. There you go. Initiative, yours. Board uncovered. I screwed up here. Uh, yeah, I think F. Lee under Stewart. There's this movement. Four, seven. One, two, three, four, five. Six and seven. Well, we missed that board next to picket. Okay, initiative. Mine. Well, let me bring up the guys with smallpox hood. <laughs> Gotta keep so your six. distance. I remember right there is a random event in the advanced game, which is smallpox breaks out. Mine again. Yeah, I'll take them again. Six again. Go one, two, three, four, five, and six to there. Initiative. Mine. Well, I'm going to pass. And the people of Culpepper are not happy by Hood's arrival. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um... Let's have Wilcox activate the ninth core. So here's movement plus one, three, they're gonna go one, two, and three, and they're gonna go one. No, they go one, two, and three to there. Initiative, mine. Stoneman activate his entire core. Here's movement plus one. There we go. So they'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven to there. The initiative. Mine again. Well, let's take them again. Let's see if we can't make some progress. There's movement plus one. Four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four to there. Initiative, yours. I'll pass again. Wilcox will activate everyone, including Burns, this time. Here's movement. Three. Sturgis go one, two, three. One, two, and three. One, two, there. Uh, initiative. Presume pass. Yes, yeah. Greg March. Here's movement straight up. 
11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 to there. Initiative. Yours, if you want. Uh, pass. Okay. Farnsworth. Movement. Eight. Gonna go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Initiative. Yours. Yeah, I'll pass. Well, let's let's have Reynolds activate the first core. Here's movement plus one. Five. So one, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, and five. Initiative. Yours? It is. I'll take them all again. Movement. There we go. Alright, we'll have Gibbon go first. He's going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. And Mead will go one, two, three, four, five, and six. And the rest of them will go one, two, three, four, five, and six. Initiative. Yours? Can you pass? I get the initiatives. Can't complain about that. No. Let's have Couch activate the second core. There's movement. That's nice. So they're all stacked here. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Initiative. Yours? Pass again. I'll Reynolds do these two divisions down here with him. We're gonna have extended marches, so movement. Three. Hmm, terrible. Need one more. Mead will go first, no transfer. Extended March. Uh, he's okay. One, two, and three. And double days extend. He's okay. One, two, three to there. Initiative. Yours if you like. Pass again. Okay. I'll have Couch activate the second again. Here's movement. Six. So they'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. One, two, three, four, five to there. Initiative. Yours? Mm. I'll activate my claws. Seven X's. Uh, extend March. It's okay. He's just going to go one, two to there. Initiative, yours. I will activate Butterfield in the fifth core. Here's moving. Not going anywhere fast. All right, he's going to stay with Griffin and they'll go first. One, two, three. One, two. One, two, three. Initiative. Mine again. Well, might as well take him to three. Here's moving. That's there you better. go. That's better. All right. We're going to have extended marches. So Griffin first extend. He flips. There we go. One, two, three, four, 
five, six, and seven to there. Uh, Sykes, actually no, uh, Humphreys will go next. Extend, he's okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Sykes, extend, he flips. They're tuckered. One, two, three, four, five, and six to there. Initiative. Mine. I'm going to pass. I'll pass as well. All right. So we end the very exciting <laughs> first day. <laughs> uh, so let's uh, open up the time, see if he's got automated time tracking. So I'm going to hit the recover button. Uh, it does not, so I will just move that down to turn two. There we go. Let's make sure that I can remove that turn two marker, and it doesn't do it automatically, so make sure you uh, take it off a ransom down there. Okay. Well, turn one ended with uh, not as much. I mean, I had some. I had a couple of good marches there, but you've managed to set up a nice line there, so. It's a matter of, can I punch through? Where do I punch through? And all that good stuff. Yeah, I definitely have... See you sneaking Butterfield around my flank there. Moi? Sneaky? Yes. Uh, it would have been a whole lot better if he didn't roll a one and a two. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> and then but, two of them go, uh, fail their extended marches. That's where it gets yeah. frustrating. It's one it thing does. to roll ones and twos, then it... To roll your fives and sixes on extended march is just frustrating. I would like to force march. No. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, then, uh, leader transfers. Let's see if I have any leader transfers now. Oh, uh, don't know. I guess I'll move Reynolds down to Mead. Um, I'm going to keep Couch and Sumner. Um, I think I'll move Hooker and Stoneman up to Bernie. Uh, and I'll move Wilcox to Sturgis. And that is all, I think. Anything for you? Yes, I'll leave. Well, let's put all the men. Yeah, I'm going to leave everybody Lee and Longstreet with McClaws. That's where the action looks like it's going to be. Yeah, yeah, it certainly looks that way. Okay, well then, you rolled the first initiative for turn one, so I will roll it for turn two. Here we go. It's yours. Okay. I could. This movement. Five. Oh, one. Two. Three. Four. Oh, five to there. Initiative. Fine. Take hood again. This movement. Ooh, seven. Oh, one, two, three to there. He has four remaining. What would Greg like to do? Well, you're four to one. I don't know if I've unlimbered my artillery. So I will do a cav retreat. So we're going to flip, get a fatigue. Uh, they are normal size, so no modifier to this. And you will lose one movement point. So we'll go one, two, three, and four to there. You'll end this arch right there. Uh, initiative. Mine again. Hmm. I'm down here to ransom. Those three hexes. One, two, three there. Initiative. Ransom again. Two hexes. It's a three turn scenario. Two movement points, I should say. 
Talk about force march. So I'll force march him. So he's going to flip this force march roll. Picks up an additional five, so his total movement now is seven. Going to lose two manpower for it. Per the new 1.5, right? Yep. But he gets to go seven hexes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven to there. Initiative. Yours. Okay. We'll have Wilcox activate the ninth core. Here is their movement plus one. Five. Uh, we'll have Wilcox and Sturgis go first. They're going to go there. What would Effley like to do? You're an 11. I have four left. You know what? We're going to stand. I know that's probably not good, but I'm going to try to see if I can't maybe get a disorganization out of this. Okay. Well, yeah, let's... Uh, I, I... My plans need that you not be there. So we're going to do an attack on the march, which is a plus one for prepared. It is a plus one for tactical. And I'm 11, you're 2, so it's a plus four for a ratio of 5 to 1. And then minus two for the minor river. So I see six up, two down, plus four, as you say. Yep, that's what I see. Here is a plus four attack. Six. <sighs> Man. Your your wishes become true, sir. Uh, it is a plus one, which fails to eject you from there. I have eleven, and that's a one D for me, so I'm Proceeding into the hole. Get it be your result? No. So they are now a that. That in my brain went a whole different way. But, you know, you made the right call. Alright, well, okay, so now we'll have Burns go one, two, three. What would F Lee like to do? You had a five per movement? Did have a five total movement. I got two left, so that'd be normal. We'll cav retreat out of there. I'll pick up my last fatigue. Where's my attempt at retreating? It's a five. That was a one, so I think that's a minus two. Or two, yeah. So I will lose one movement point. And so I gotta go further away by road for one, further away by road two, further away by road three, further away by road four. You know what? I'm just gonna take the other two, five and six, to get back to there. Okay. And that hex is now yours. Yep, I got one left, so I will take it. Simply gonna go one, two, three to there. Uh, initiative. Yours. Well, I should have moved. No, I didn't know where to put Longstreet. We'll activate Anderson for movement. Go four hexes. Go one, two, three, four to there. Initiative. Mine. Well, I wish I could dig in on the march. <laughs> I really missed that. I mean, I didn't like it. You know, the no, first no, time we no played it. No but... shovels. No shovels requisitioned in 1862. I'll take ransom to take three. Is this movement? Ah, extend march. He's okay, but he's only going to go two hexes. One, two. Initiative, mine again. I'm going to pass. 
Wilcox will activate Getty and Burns. Here is the movement plus one, three. It's going to transfer to Burns. I'm going to go one, two, three, and one, two, three. Initiative, mine. Uh, we'll take them to three. Movement plus one. Here we go. There we go. All right. He will stay with Burns. Here is their extended march. Uh, they're good. So one, two, three, four to there. What would Ooh. Stuart like to do? So you've got three remaining? I do have three remaining. Yeah, we're all retreat out of there. Starts off with two strength. Here's his retreat roll. Four. Okay, so I lose two. I have one left. So I've got to go further away out of a Zoc to there. Further away out of a Zoc to there. That's two. Uh, further away by road, three to there. Further away by road, four to there. Yep. I'll stop there. Okay, four to there. I had three left. I lost, uh, so I have one left. Go to St. James Church. And uh, somebody did point out that is a, that's an error. It should be St. James's. Oh. Austria <laughs> on the other side of that S, so good catch. It only took us ten years. Getty will go one, two, three, four. Five to there. Initiative. Mine. Okay. I'll have Stoneman activate the third core. So they're going to go to one. Here is their movement plus one. Dang it. <laughs> As you like to say. Uh, one, two. One, two. And one. I'll just go to there. The initiative. Yours. Anderson to take two. This movement. Seven. We'll go one, two, three to there. He'll have left to make a prepared attack on Getty. Type's going to be a plus one. Tactical's going to be a plus one. Flank is going to be a plus two. And artillery is going to be, that's minus, minus one. one. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be one, two, three, four up and one down for a final of a plus three. Yep. Okay, plus three. Four. All right, Getty, this is your moment. Here's the defense. Okay, four. We stand. Um... So Man part loss for me, I think. Yep. I was a 15, so it's going to be a 1D for me. Flip. Decrease. And I flip to disorganize. And... That will D that, me out for him. completely. Yep. So, I'm a D. So, he will lose that. And I'm going to... Let's see. If I do a voluntary retreat, if I did that, I would have to go to here. It would be priority two, because it's uh, away from you, and it's not by road, but it's not in your ZOC. So, uh, I could do the first hex there, and then because it's a voluntary retreat, I could do up to three more if I wish. So I think I'm going to exercise that. Uh, so I'm going to go there, priority two, uh, and then free and clear on the second chart. I can just not get closer, not in your Zoc. Uh, I'm going to go one, two, and 
3 to there. Does that work for you? Yeah. Cool. I think that's right. right. Yep. Okay. And uh, have yours. Yeah. Initiative. That's mine again. Well, sir. Any holes? Uh, I'll take picket. This movement. Go three. Man, do I want to leave anything? No, nope, we're just going to go one, two, three. Initiative. Mine. Take picket. Go one, two, three, four to there. Fine. We'll take claws. This movement. Five. We'll drop off a sub. Leaving with one piece of artillery. So they're going to go one, two to there. Sub three stays there. I'll stop there. Initiative. Mine. Okay. Claws will attempt a core assault on Wilcox. Attempt. Comes off. This is going to be a type of a plus one. I have all six X's covered. The flank is going to be a plus four. The Lee bonus. Plus one. Oh, that's clear terrain. So that's going to be... Uh, I'm going to attempt a grand assault. Five leads. Okay, so I can bring in picket. So now I have a ratio of plus one. And the artillery is going to be a minus two. So I have five, six, seven up and two down for a final of a plus five. Okay. Plus five. Here's my attack roll. Left. There we go. Here's defense. Oh, oh wow. Split. Yeah. Ooh. We might not even need to play turn three on this one. I ah, man. Okay. Uh six one split, so eleven to one. Is that right? Yeah. So plus ten and I have eight, so that's five DR. Yeah, that is now a mathematical certainty that there is no way that I can pull this one out. So five DR. That was uh there you go. Yeah, boy howdy. That was a the the best of the 6-1 splits thus far. Uh, so we're going to lose 1 2 3 4 5 down to 3. Flips demoralized, double demoralized. Burns is completely wrecked. And they take the last fatigue. So Four, uh, priority four is there, and then uh, not farther away, but with a friendly to here is priority three, right? Not to a hex more distant, it's not to an enemy, uh, and it's to the left side of the slash because it's in friendly, right? So long up, long up. Road Piker Trail. Okay, so it's good. Uh, then that was one, two, three, and four. Okay. Wilcox is completely done for the war. <laughs> the the trust that was placed on him was severely misguided. I'll move Pickett into St. James's Church. And I'll leave McClaws where he is. Uh, initiative, yours. Oh, there it is. Well, well, we'll give it a little bit here. I mean, I'm at net one right now. Uh, well, presuming that I'm going to place a unit here. So that's six, and then uh, I'm at six losses, so that's net five. Yeah, so I'm at one, uh, and I need to get 14 in one turn. Mmm, 
<laughs> this one you've got have. you've got the rest of this turn and next turn, so you've got right, 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 right. Yeah, but I'm I'm doing the calculus in my head, going, okay, so these are the big money ones here. You've got those covered, and they're doubled. If this is all clear, that's not clear, so not going to happen. Man, these I think these are just pie in the sky notions way down here at Rapidan and Mitchell Station. Could happen, but. Oh, an orange courthouse as well. I didn't realize that oh, was yeah. a, that that's a, a double four. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But again, that means the the railroad is open, so that's going to require a lot of heavy lifting. Man, this is a real tough nut to crack for the union. Um, but we're going to play a few more here, and we'll at least get to I think the end of turn two here, and we'll see how if fortunes change. But that five D is woof. That's pretty bad. We're gonna have the third core activate again see if they can actually do what I asked them to do last time uh, so they go to two here's movement no wow it's, it's, uh, it's not it's not going well Roger <laughs> it's not going well at all uh, so they're gonna go there they're gonna go to their uh, initiative uh, yeah more one sixes did you activate Whipple I did not activate Whipple oh, okay but yeah okay. Um, yeah, I was like, where's where's my third guy? But I'm so flummoxed by the 5DR that it, it doesn't matter. So, okay. go ahead. Um, interesting. Okay, so now the question is... I guess we'll hold the line here. Long shot with Pickett and McClaws. So, here's their movement. Pickett will go first... Longstreet will stay with Claws. So here's Pickett. He's going to go to Disorganize. Going to go one to there. There's some Claws, Extend March. He's okay. He's going to go one, two to there. Initiative, Mine. I'll pass. Okay. I'm going to have Reynolds activate the first core. Here's their movement. Uh, they'll go there. Would WH Lee like to do anything? They'll stand. Okay. Uh, Franklin will go one, two, three, four. Howard will go one, two. Uh, initiative, yours? I'll pass. Okay. Um, I got those wrong. I need to put Howard back because I'm going by the color of his symbol and not what's around his number, so he's going to come back to Bealton Station since he could not have been activated, so do that. Let's get Baldy Smith moving! Go 6 core, activate! Here's their movement, plus 1, 4. He will go with uh, Newton. He'll go 1, 2, 3, and 4. The others go 1, 2, 3, and 4. Four and one, two, three to there. Initiative yours? Yes. Okay. Gibbon will march straight up. Four, one, two, three, four. Initiative mine. Uh, Smith will take them again. Movement five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Initiative. Six and one. We'll have Butterfield activate the fifth. Here's movement plus one. Very nice movement. Griffin will go first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
Sykes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Humphreys, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Initiative, yours. I will take Hood of T3. Not good, not good. One, two to there. Initiative, mine, man, I want to cut the teeth for. Here's just there. The best cure for smallpox is marching. Yeah. I'm gonna stay, they're gonna get more entrenchments. They'll get entrenched there. Yeah, I think I need to leave his, his open, because you can still come around. Yeah, I'll have to make Hampton with Stuart. There we go. Wow. <laughs> Stuart. What plumage. Well, with that, he's just going to go two, three to there. Up his tactical initiative. Mine, double ones, double twos. I think that's everybody. Yeah, I'm going to pass. Need to find a crease. A crease? I'm a country for a crease. Um, just one little point on this map where I was like, I wish there was a road right there. That would be handy. Uh, I'm going to have Couch activate the second core completely. Here's the movement, plus one, four. Couch and Hancock will go first. We'll go three, and four. French will go one and four. Howard will go one, two, three, four to there. Initiative, yours. Nope, we need to pass. Do the second core again. Here's movement, plus one. Grr, teeth grinding. Oh. I'm so upset, Roger. <laughs> Hey, game! <sighs> Alright, well, needs must. So, uh, Hancock will force march. So he's going to flip. And here's the force march roll. He gets an additional three. So we've got five total, and he loses one manpower. So we have. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, got two each. Uh, French will force march. Here's his force march roll. Okay, so he gets another two. He's got four total. He's going to lose a manpower. And he's going to go... One, two, three, four to there. Howard's just going to go one to there. Initiative, mine. Okay. Gonna activate the second core a third time. We'll have extend marches for everyone. Here's their movement. Five. Let's start with Couch and Hancock, see what happens. Uh, extended March for them. They're okay. So we get five. One, two, three, four to there. Would Stuart and others like to do anything? I have one left. No, they'll stand. Okay. Which is Extend March. 
he's going to lose a manpower. Uh, one, two, three, four, to there. And Howard extend. He's okay. He will go one, two, three, four, five to there. Initiative, yours. Not the plane, do I attack? So I'm going to activate the claws and sub three for movement. I'm only going to be able to go one hex, so I'm just going to uh, roll McClaws' Extend March. He's okay. So we're going to go Zock to Zock to Stewart's hex. So they're both going to have to go to Disorganize, since we're not going by road. So they're just going to stack up there. All right. Initiative, that's yours. Well, that was unsporting. I didn't like that. I didn't want to. I thought about moving sub two up to try to get a flank, but then I thought the chances of getting the next initiative were not good. So, and I didn't like a zero attack. All right, Gibbon's going to march. Here's movement. Three. He will go one, two, and three. I will have Smith activate the sixth core to three. Here's movement. Six. He will stay where he is. Brooks will go extended march. He's all right. One, two, three, four, and five. Smith extend. They flip. Newton goes one, two, three, four, five to there. And how? He's okay. We'll take Warrington Junction. Initiative, yours. Well, I think I'm going to take McClaw's sub three again. We'll roll for movement because they could potentially go to St. James Church. So they get a six. And we'll do sub three. We'll go first. Here's their extend march. It's a four, no modifiers. Go one hex to there. Now here's McClaws. This is going to be plus. Three? Wow, it's okay. Lucky son of a gun. And Longstreet and Lee will go with them. Okay, initiative. Mine. Tired everybody out. Except for the ones I want to have dig in, so I'm going to pass. I'm going to look around here. I think it's worth taking the fifth core again. So here's their movement plus one. <laughs> Not worth it. <sighs> All right, Griffin's extend of plus one. He's going to lose a manpower. Go one and two to there. Sykes extend. He's okay. He goes one and two, and Humphreys. Uh, extend. It's okay. One and two. Right. Initiative. Yours. Yeah, you could get that. So I'll take Hood of Teague 4. Here's his movement. Six. Here's his extend. Plus. Just plus one. Two. Plus one. So he's going to lose, uh, let's see, 6 on 12. I think that's just going to be a one loss, I think. Yes. He can go 6 hexes. It's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to there. Initiative, yours. Stoneman will activate Whipple. Here's a movement plus one. Five. One, two, three, 
four and five to there. Initiative mine. All right. Well, I've made a right mess of things today, so I'm going to pass. Okay. I will pass as well. Okay. Uh, we will hit the sunshine recover and advance the turn to our final turn. Turn three for all the marbles. This is it. Uh, I don't know how long turn three is going to go, but <laughs> we're going to make some attempts. Of course, it comes down to initiatives and die rolls, as always. So, don't want to deviate from that script too much. But uh, any leader transfers for me? I think Burnside will stay where he is with Couch and Hunt. Smith is going to stay uh, stay with Newton. Uh, I'm going to move Stoneman and Hooker. Mm, no, I'm not. I'm going to keep them there. Uh, Butterfield will go to Humphreys, I think. And I believe that's all I'm going to do. What about you? I'm going to move in Long Street to sub two. Yeah, I think that's the thing to try to do. We'll see how that works for me. Maybe an error. We'll find out. No, okay. that's what I'm going to try. Okay, well then uh, I'll let you take the first initiative roll for our turn three. Okay. Junior. Six one split. All right. I have finite numbers of things that I can do today, and my priority list is a little jumbled. So let's see. Realistically, what can I accomplish today? Yeah, I'm at I'm at one. So I need thirteen points to get a marginal. Can I do that today with some combination of stuff? Uh, Reynolds is going to activate Double Day and Mead for an assault on Stewart's cavalry. What would you like to do? We'll stand, I think. Okay. <laughs> we got we got masses. All right. So here is the assault attempt. It's four. Uh, Reynolds is a seven, so I could bring in up to three units, which I will. So we're going to bring in 26 uh, versus your 10, right? So we got plus one assault. Uh, leadership is the same. I've got a ratio of plus one. And then I've got seven pieces of artillery versus your four. So that's plus three. Uh, which I think is just covers it, right? Covers yep. it and clear. Uh, then a minus two for crossing the bridge. This is going to be foolhardy, I'm sure, but it's a zero attack. Is that what you concur? Minus two bridge, yeah, for an even attack. Okay. Okay. Here's the here's the attack. It's a two. Three. So, so negative one, I'm just digging a hole. So I think I, I wanted to at least try that. Um, let's see. So I'm at 26 and negative one. So I lost another two there. Uh, I don't know that there's a, a reason to keep going for turn three. Uh, I will I will tell you. First of all, congratulations. Uh, the, the Confederates have managed to hold out here. Uh, the Union will... Uh, will disregard this attempt to cross the Rappahannock. But uh, as we go into our session review for this one, we're going to do an after action here, but I will tell you what my my hopes were. At least get over here. I, that was just a, a show of force. I thought maybe with 26 that you would move, and you have proven time and again that I can always misjudge what you're going to do with the cavalry, because when I think you're going to stand, you run, and vice versa. So... That was a good stand. That was a really good stand there. Um, but yeah, I was hoping to get at least across there. And then Burnside, I don't know that I was actually going to make an attempt on McClaws. But I did want to have the option to perhaps come around here. But even this, with, look at them, they're fatigued. 
day three, I'm going to roll poorly because that's what I do. The fifth core was was the option here, and I didn't know if I was going to try to box in here, but uh, Brandy Station's just not worth very much, right? Yeah. So I wasn't going to push too hard for Brandy Station unless uh, at some point I was trying to look at, okay, tough nut to crack for all the reasons that we spoke of right from the beginning. It's a logistical nightmare. Uh, anytime you want to do an attack with the Union, which is already hard, it's another level of difficulty because trying to set things up and losing the next initiative. So fantastic strings of initiatives for the Confederates today. Very happy to to see you get to the point where it's like, I don't have any more things I can do, so I'm just going to stop. But that's very difficult for the Union to uh, to try to get a breakthrough. And I think the secret here is to uh, tickle the flanks somehow on this one. And um, you managed to get up here, block this one, and because the Fifth Corps could not proceed as far as they wanted to around here, because Hood got up there, it's like, damn, okay, smallpox makes you run faster. I was going to try that, that, you know, and once you started pulling units back to the center here, then surely this is the moment for the Ninth Corps and, and Burns and Wilcox to make their big moment. And I want to point out something that we got feedback during our last campaign game. Uh, it was about two sessions ago. And I know it was meant in a little bit of snark, uh, because it's the internet and every comment is, is met with either glowing approval or it's a little bit of snark. But I don't know who the person was because I don't know them directly. But they said, <clears throat> and I'm going to paraphrase here, I always have to laugh when you guys blame the die roller when you often send a single division out very far forward of the line and then get smacked because you get surrounded and everything. I will partially agree with you on that. Uh, yes, sometimes it is folly to just go chasing after something way ahead and you're five or six miles removed from the rest of the body of the core. And, and yes, you're going to pay for that in this game because, lo and behold, your opponent's going to get that string of initiatives and come up and surround and attack. And so the Union has to play it very safe on this one. But in my defense, I will say that I thought that was a very good stepping advance uh, where we tried to bring the Ninth Corps across Miller's Mill, and that didn't work, so we got a really nice six roll, and I tried to come around and set up a really good flank over here. But then what happened? They ran out of gas, and you got the next initiatives, and you made me pay for it. So, yes, he is partially correct that that is always a risk in this game, but at the same time, I thought it wasn't a bad play, you know. You, you've got to try to get in there. You've got to get something. And, and there's a part of this particular scenario where it seems like you, you, you're getting six points, kid. That's what you're getting. Yes. That's a detriment because that is tying up three divisions for all that. And anything else, you're going to have to try to get some manpower losses. And you just had this phenomenal wall here. So, ah, <laughs> interior lines for the win. Yeah, that I, I didn't think what you did. I mean, I was sitting here thinking, okay, if you get the next initiatives, you're going to get across the river, and I, and you're going to be able to clear at least Brandy Station is what I was thinking. But I got the initiatives, and I was able to... Uh, the ability for the Confederate to drop off subs and the Union not being able to almost to me makes this unbalanced i think i'm kind of wondering if there's a balance issue but i don't want to speak for that because yeah, we won't play yeah right now what i will say on this one is i think in in my gut that because everyone's set up here and the juicy targets are down here that since you got the first string of initiatives and you committed to this forward line right here at the Rappahannock Station, what I should have done, uh, the problem is you telegraph that from the beginning of turn one, is you pick the push room method and you commit to go completely around their left or you commit to come all the way around their right and you ignore this whole center line. But 
that you need a lot of help with movement rolls and you need to yeah. not not fail an extender march and you need to have perhaps one good force march because once you can clear the Rappahannock either upstream or downstream then you've got the confederate player scrambling and as you were doing you were shuttling back and forth here but shuttling one or two hexes is big difference than shuttling from the left flank mm. to the right flank if you can do both that's that's great, but I don't think that's realistic. I think you have to commit to one or the other, um, because every time I was trying to build up a nice, sizable force here to do an attack, I couldn't get there in, in time. Uh, just having that one little cavalry right there that built a fort by the time I was ready to do something, that's a difference between a multi-man ratio and oh, yep. even, you know. So that was a great defense of of that station there. Uh, and I, and I really, at some point I just wanted to try the, uh, the extra layer of grand assaults here, but I still was not in a good position cause I had Burnside down here. Um, so yeah, I think in our next game, perhaps you will, since you have some experience with that, you may get the opportunity to do a grand assault with those extra layers of the grand divisions, but I was not able to pull that off. But this one's tough. It's, it is tough. It really makes you appreciate, like we've gone back to the beginning, you've got to pick your opportunities for maneuver. You've got to pick an opportunity for, all right, I really want Rapidan Station. I'm going to make everything happen so that I can get Rapidan Station. But I think a lot of that is fool's gold because there's just never going to be a possibility. I don't think that the Confederates are going to have not a... A division sitting on uh, or any unit a sub or whatever sitting on the orange and alexandria at any point i'm glad that the lincoln stanton plan was not enacted <laughs> you know but again it's it comes down to initiatives that's that's why we play the game but uh yeah once once i got smacked really hard here by burn you know burns got smacked for 5d yeah. that was that was the writing on the wall but i didn't want to just I don't want to leave the audience unfulfilled with two turns out of three, so I figured we'll at least get to turn three, and I'll make a play for something. But that was that was even probably, worse. Cause... I sh I probably should have fallen back after I defeated Burns because he'd have had a hard time making up the the point deficit. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so there is some balance in this between. I think it's most of it is as you like to call it, fool's gold. I think some of those victory point locations are an incentive to drive you because historically that's what the army of the potomac wanted but i think realistically you probably need to come in there really hot and heavy and just try to beat the stuffing out of them and yeah. get get the six that you're going to get and then try to figure out a way to inflict eight manpower losses without losing your own manpower losses somehow but that's the trick of it um so for those of you who have played this over the last 20 years and have experience, I know there's some new players out there. I know Eric Brosius and, and uh, his buddy are, have been playing through this as well. So some of you out there that have experience with this, that's where we want to hear your feedback down in the comment section. Good, bad, ugly, indifferent, whatever. Uh, if we goofed anything, please let us know. And if you have a clarification or an easier way for us mentally to understand the Grand Division assault process up to Burnside, that would be very helpful as well as we prepare to swap sides next week and uh, Roger will get he will get the uh, onerous task of moving the Army of the Potomac somewhere down along the Rappahannock but um, what else do we have to say about this today anything no I, I like how they're able to and I realize this is an older scenario and they've learned a lot since then the designers how they, they can add a little bit of tweak and a twist to make each module different while still maintaining the 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 basic gameplay I, I think is really nice and and makes it specific to the campaign which i i have to read about this grand division a little bit even more i've read it multiple times now and I, I, but uh yeah this was i i wish i could say i played brilliantly but you get a six one. Oh yeah every time <laughs> but and and you know we can roll six ones all day and we can roll snake eyes all day so yes, sometimes, yes. Well, sometimes they help <laughs> sometimes they hurt but uh coming back to that whole thing of like 
why why I liked this right out of the gate was the familiarity of the terrain. Well, familiarity does breed contempt because uh, the road network still sucks. (laughs) The the terrain, it's like, I really need to be right there. You know, I wish when Whipple was right here, I was like, I just need a road right here so I don't have to spend five miles to go around. And I needed a road right here so that I could easily get down towards the Kelly Ford. But no, that's why we love these maps because the road network in you know the 19th century was uh, you can't get there from here but on the confederate side though it's it's perfect there are all these little side roads to slide back and forth between these fords is there yep. st james church to farley the guys under i mean there's just a nice the road network for the confederates as you said interior lines is is there and it really helped me i was able to to just move back and forth and it worked great. Yeah, you had to work on the exterior line. Yep. Yeah, and I yeah, it's always a challenge that makes it even more so. So you can add three or four different levels of complexity for the union player in this one. And be prepared for that, but uh there's a certain amount of patience that we mentioned in in previous recordings that you just got to take your time, but if you do something stupid, it's in a and it's a basic scenario with a very finite victory point schedule. If you screw up, as I did, and lose five manpower right out of the gate. Uh, yeah, that's... so. Yeah. Feel free to leave your comments and commiserations below, and well wishes and uh, condolence cards are always appreciated. But uh, I think we're good here, so for the first time in our new series, I'm going to thank everybody for watching, of course. We want to ask you to interact with us however you do that. If you see this out on social media, feel free to send it to a friend who's not uh, aware of these. And uh, we do want to talk to you down there in the comments section. So feel free to do however you like there. And I'm also showing you a couple uh, a couple of folk who kick in a buck or two for the channel. That's not expected, but it's certainly appreciated. And until next week, Roger, thanks for another great session today. Yeah, you're welcome, and thank you. This is fantastic. I'm looking forward to the replay. Take care. As am I. Bye-bye.